and welcome if it's appropriate welcome back these classes i've been taking through john casablancas are still very much going on um i just finished my week 10 class uh, within the past 10 minutes or so i just got off there i have been i wouldn't say slacking but i guess that is the correct word um these past two weeks i haven't taken very much of a video simply because I have felt my excitement kind of decline a little bit. Um, not only because of just something that I've been doing, but the past, not the teacher I had today, but maybe the past two really didn't seem like they wanted to be there necessarily. It didn't seem like they were excited or looking forward to it like we were. They were just kind of going through the motions and getting out of the way in a sense, which really puts a damper on things because I am not a naturally What's the word? Um, I was never good in school. <laughs> um, so taking these classes was really just me pushing myself out of my comfort zone and saying you can and will learn more, you can be dedicated, and I have been. But it's just really nice to have that enthusiasm returned by the person that is um, dropping knowledge on you. So right now, um, I'm going to kind of sum up the past four weeks simply because these lessons are starting to feel a little bit repetitive and I don't want every single video to be saying the same exact thing to you guys. So my last video was week six. Uh, week seven, we talked about characters, poses, and facial expressions. Um, basically just the idea of being comfortable with getting into character, being comfortable with stepping outside of yourself and having mannerisms that you don't have and doing different movements while you talk that you wouldn't usually do. It's very important to be able to step outside of your personality or your beliefs or the way that you do things on a daily basis in order to really capture the essence of a character and make somebody believe that you are this person that you're trying to create. On the topic of poses, we also talked about photo shoots. Um, when you are in front of an actual camera, they will just be constantly taking pictures, but you don't wanna move too fast, you know what I mean? You gotta have small, slow movements. It definitely just spin. <laughs> you want your movements in front of a camera during a photo shoot to be small and slow. So for instance, you go from here to here to here. Like you see what I mean by small and slow. You don't wanna be all over the place, go from here to here to here to here because those are four very different things. And the smallest adjustment in your hand placement or the direction that you're looking or even the shape of your mouth can change the entire feeling of a photo. So it's all about the small details. Also in week seven, another thing we talked about was headshots. Um, in the modeling and or acting world, you definitely need headshots. As you get older, you don't need to update them as frequently because we don't change as often physically as we do when we're a child, but it is important to keep them updated if you get a major haircut or some type of procedure done or anything like that. If your look really drastically changes, of course, update your headshots. The week after that, week eight, we talked about influencers. Um, this was one of those classes where I just really my, uh, for lack of a better term, my whole vibe was off <laughs> just because the teacher that we had seemed to really just want to get it out of the way. Um, again, I want to make these videos to give an honest, an honest uh, review on each one of these classes and how I really feel and how I really see these teachers and how I really think this is going on, whether it's a waste of my time or not. Week eight was just a class where I just didn't feel like the teacher really wanted to be there. Um, I feel like he was really just reading off a script and not necessarily wanting to interact with us, but just to kill time. Um, he even let us go 15, 20 minutes early just because he couldn't talk in circles anymore. So I wasn't really satisfied with this week. Um, really all I have in my notes is the average number of followers for each niche and the average price per post. So in hindsight, I can see that that is it's okay, baby. It's just fireworks. In hindsight, I can see that this is important information to know um, because I definitely didn't know any of it before. I didn't think about the average numbers of followers for uh, a typical food account or photography account, fitness account, music, lifestyle, fashion, pets, whatever type of niche that you're in. I never really thought about the average number of followers 
for each type of niche. Um, and I never really thought about the average price per post because you know, you know that people have ads, people have sponsors and all sorts of different things, but you never really think about the price. So I guess, um, interestingly enough for fashion and design, the average price is about $217 for each post, which really isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things. Moving on to week nine, which was teleprompter acting. So um, instead of, you know, reading a script and memorizing it always, sometimes in some situations you will have a teleprompter, which is a camera that you look directly into and you're reading your script at the same time. I don't remember exactly how they said the glass or the science technology behind that works, but basically it looks like you're staring directly into the camera while you are reading your script. So last week in this class, she really emphasized how important going big on camera is. Um, when you have small movements or hardly any emotion or anything like that, it doesn't translate very well on camera. Even if you're trying to have a calm moment or a soft moment or something like that, nine times out of 10, you want to be more over the top than you think you should be because it just translates better to the camera. A lot of this class was just all of us taking turns reading different scripts or different lines or interacting with each other improvisationally. She just started to touch on that a little bit more. We were also taught the basics of setting up an actor's resume, which we have to have done by next week. So just sort of a rough draft, um, just to give us an idea of what a resume of that kind. <laughs> It's 4th of July, peaches. It's okay. Huh. So now we have a basic idea of how to build an actor's resume. <laughs> right, so now we are at week 10. Um, like I said, week 10 is today. Uh, just finished my class a few minutes ago. And we had the same teacher that we had last week. Her name was Miss Trish. She's coming out of North Carolina. I really like her. Um, I really feel like she's excited to give us accurate information and she really wants us to get things just so so. I really appreciate the way that she takes these classes seriously because I want to take them seriously as well. I want to get every possible ounce of knowledge and information that I can out of each one of these lectures. So today we focused on cold reads and improv, which we have already hit on before a couple of weeks ago, if you guys remember. A cold read is basically when you go into an audition and they give you a set of lines or a script for a commercial or something like that, just to read within the next five, 10, 15 minutes. So you have to get that memorized as much as you can quickly and be able to deliver it with the correct emotion. So a couple of tips that she gave us on cold reading were to memorize the first and the last lines, because if you can deliver the first line and the last line both seamlessly, you can kind of glance at your script at the lines in between, and it doesn't look like a big deal. It doesn't look like you haven't read this before. While you are delivering your lines or your script or whatever else, try to stare at one spot. If there's no camera involved in this audition, stare at your director, stare at a spot on the wall, but whatever you do, pick one spot and keep eye contact with it. That just shows that you're focused and you are confident because each person in these situations that is going to be you know, judging you off of the way you deliver these lines, they're looking for confidence, diction, volume, and presentation. So you have to make sure you are on point. I did have fun in this class today. Um, I have always been nervous to do improvisational things just because I'm not like an off the cuff type of person. I can't just right off the top of my head tell you a story that'll make you laugh or cry or feel some type of way. But I'm happy to be getting some more practice in and we did a lot of drills where we kind of um, got into groups or we partnered up and we kind of improv back and forth and it's really cool to interact with people that want to accomplish the same things you do that are interested in learning this information. This video was a little bit different. Um, I kind of condensed the last four weeks into one just because like I said, I don't want to sound too repetitive. Um, I really want to give an honest review, my honest opinion on how these classes are going but I don't want anyone to have to sit through just the same video every single week. So in a nutshell, um, these classes are still going very well. I am enjoying myself and I'm looking forward to see how we progress 
because I really don't want these to get too repetitive. I don't want these classes to just be redundant and the same class every three weeks. So I'm still hanging in there. I'm still staying dedicated, um, staying positive about this. So thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you want to like, subscribe, share, please do that. Thank you for coming back to Studio 840 and I will see you again real soon.